All right, everybody. Our next speaker is Jim Sikoski. Uh, Jim's a retired science teacher uh, in Denver, and he's been one of our longtime volunteers on Marspedia. Uh, and I'm really excited to hear his talk, How to Explore Mars Without Leaving Your Chair. Take it away, Jim. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jim Sikoski. I'm a retired teacher. I'm here today to describe my adventures using NASA satellites. I've been lucky to use the Hubble Space Telescope, the Mars Global Surveyor, and the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter as an amateur. Uh, people often ask how I got interested in space. Well, when I was a kid in the 50s, there were several really good science fiction movies that had a big impact on me. One was uh, Conquest of Space, and then Destination Moon, and of course, Forbidden Planet, one of my all-time favorite movies at the time. Uh, Werner von Braun was the top rocket scientist in the world. And he teamed up with Walt Disney to make a series of programs about space. Walt Disney illustrated many physics principles with his cartoon characters in a way that I was able to understand. I grew up in a small town that had many clear views of the night sky. I used to climb out of my bedroom window to the roof and look at the night sky with my dad's binoculars. Uh, later, as a young teen, I mowed grass for 50 cents an hour, saved my money, and bought a $20 telescope from Edmund Scientific. That shows how old I am, I guess. Uh, what I, when I found something like Jupiter or Saturn, I would go around the neighborhood and drag everyone out to see the wonders through my telescope. When I taught Earth science and astronomy, I used to rent a portable planetarium. We blew it up with a fan and everyone sat on the floor. I showed the night sky at different seasons and in different locations. It was very educational for the kids and the teacher. I, I served as executive officer for Crew 64 at the Mars Desert Research Station in Utah. It may have been the best two weeks of my life. When I submitted targets for the Mars Global Surveyor, I had to walk a mile to the public library because I did not yet have a motor for my home computer. Uh, Go Mars Global Surveyor started taking pictures in 1997. Uh, NASA started to accept suggestions from the public uh, a few years later, 2003, and I received my first picture in 2004. Uh, contact was lost with a spacecraft uh, in 2006, so I had about two years to uh, suggest targets for this uh, camera. Um, now, what I did was I studied maps, quadrangle maps. Uh, Mars is divided into 30 quadrangles, and I would get a map like this and, and study them and try to find something I thought was interesting. This is the Themacia quadrangle in the southern hemisphere. I found a, uh, like a dark smudge in a crater there, and um, I wondered what was causing it. So I submitted a suggestion, and uh, lo and behold, we found uh, dark sand dunes. So the dark spots, spot in that crater were caused by dark sand dunes. Uh, I also, I was very excited with uh, Noctis Labyrinthus. Mariner 9 saw this first in 1971, and it was, it looked really interesting. Uh, Noctis Labyrinthus is on the end of the Valles Marineris Canyon system, that the huge canyon system on Mars. I submitted a suggestion, and uh, uh, I found some interesting uh, layers. Uh, layers on Mars are, are really great because they, they show there might have been water in the past. Uh, layers are often found underneath uh, lakes. They're formed underneath lakes. Sometimes they're formed with the use of groundwater. Either way, uh, it shows there was water in the past on Mars. At the time, jellies were really an exciting thing that we didn't know much about. I looked at this uh, a picture and I thought that based on the size and the location and the age of this crater that it might have jellies. So I submitted a uh, request and I did find jellies. Now at the time, jellies were thought to be caused by recent running water. Uh, since that time, uh, we've made many more observations and we think they're caused by chunks of dry ice moving down the slopes in the springtime. Uh, I tried to look for layers in the edges of these, this mesa and this butte. And I did find layers, many fine layers uh, along that butte. 
Also, I found dark slope streaks. Dark slope streaks are unique to Mars. Uh, what happens is the bright dust avalanches down the slope and then it uncovers the, uh, the surface so you can see the dark underlying surface. Next, I wanna talk about my exciting times with the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. Uh, I was able to use the high rise on it. Uh, from the beginning, uh, NASA called this the uh, people's camera because they wanted people to be involved in selection of, uh, of places to look at. Now, uh, for many more pictures from this and information, we go to uh, the uh, Mars, uh, Marspedia, uh, Mars Society's online encyclopedia. Uh, they and the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter arrived in 2006. Uh, NASA started to accept suggestions in 2010. And shortly thereafter, I received my, my first picture. I was very excited to get a picture from this camera because it was such a good camera. I was interested in chaos regions. Chaos regions are places on Mars where the water, uh, water exploded out of the ground. The ground collapsed, water came gushing out, and it caused an enormous amount of erosion. Uh, the uh, background image is uh, from Themis, and Themis is on board the Mars Odyssey. It was launched in 2001, and it's still going strong, still sending us pictures. Uh, they, they give us nice, wide, wide views. Uh, the uh, red box is a context for a CTX image. Uh, what I do is usually get a CTX image and study those. They have, we have almost total coverage of the planet right now uh, with the CTX images, and they are very good. The black box is the area in the uh, high-rise image, which I received. And this is the image, my first image. I was really excited to get something there. Uh, and it's a canyon system. Uh, the depth is about one kilometer. That's pretty deep, but it's not quite as deep as the Grand Canyon. The Grand Canyon is about a mile deep in certain places. And the enlargement shows uh, some layers. I found glaciers. We're excited to find glaciers because uh, that's one place where we know there is ice. Maybe we'll go there and mine that for water for future colonists. Uh, another glacier I found is an older one. Uh, it's hollowed out in the middle uh, because the ice is mostly gone. Uh, however, you can still see uh, the moraine. The moraine is what's carried by the glacier. Uh, I found some things where, which were very mysterious at first. Uh, I found this thing. I didn't know what caused it. I looked in journals and things. And I couldn't easily, quickly find a, an answer. Uh, this is another picture of these. I'm very proud of this picture because it was used in a journal article about this topic. Uh, this is another um, picture I'm very proud of because it was also used in research that was published in a journal. Uh, what it represents is a volcano erupting under ice. The volcano erupted under ice, it melted the ice, the, the water kind of flowed away or disappeared, and then uh, it left a void. And then the ground collapsed into that void making all these cracks. We're pretty sure of this feature because uh, we see these same features on Iceland. Uh, this picture came up and it was labeled as a possible landing site. I was really excited there that, you know, maybe something I suggested would be visited by a lander. Uh, the enlargement shows some detail. You could see the uh, layers much better. There's a number of uh, sand dunes there too. And also uh, there's faults. Uh, some uh, pictures, they were just plain neat, I think. Here you see these boulders going down a slope. You see where the boulder came to rest, and you, if you look at the track, you see that it, in some places it's discontinuous. So perhaps that boulder bounced as it first went down. Uh, sand dunes are common on Mars. This picture is a typical picture you could receive from high rise. So it has a picture number. It also has a scale. All of them have a scale. The scale is usually 500 meters. Sometimes it's 1,000 meters. The picture itself is 3.7 miles across. So that's probably the distance all of us could walk. It is a little bit longer than a 5K race. So these are not really uh, big pictures, picture areas. Uh, now, next image is in the center and um, I'm gonna enlarge it. And in the center, you can get color pictures. There's a center strip that's taken in different colors. So you could, you could come up with colors uh, we did this to save money. So instead of having a camera that was showed a, a totally uh,
color picture, we have just a color strip in the center. Uh, and this shows the, the colored dunes. Uh, this is sort of an artificial color. Uh, we make these colors so that we can uh, identify some minerals. The colors for dunes can be really pretty. They can be purple, uh, blue, uh, even turquoise. And another beautiful thing you have on Mars are these dust devil tracks. You may have heard about these. Uh, so when the dust devil touches down on the ground, it blows away this very fine, thin, bright dust. And when it does that, you can then see the underlying surface is being dark. Uh, and this pattern of uh, dust devils you see here, dust devil tracks, uh, it would change. So maybe in six months, it'd be totally different. Oh, and by the way, the, the dust devils can be very large on Mars. It could be five miles high, but there's very little power behind them uh, because the air is so thin. The air on Mars is only about 1% the thickness that we have here. Um, some features, they're not, they don't look extra great, but they are significant, like this oxbow. Oxbow is a kind of channel. So the water uh, moves along in increasingly bigger meanders. And then uh, often it eventually makes a shortcut called a cutoff. Uh, the important thing here is that it takes a while to form these or it takes a number of events over a period of time. So when you find an oxbow, it means the water was around there for a while. It wasn't just a single flood. Some features are strange. Um, now Mars, uh, the ground, it contains a lot of frozen water uh, and that water sometimes disappears and it makes various holes and pits and canyons and hollows like you see here. Uh, on the pictures I, I take, I, I try to put some sort of a scale. Uh, I like to use a scale like uh, the size of a football field. It gives you an idea of how big the, the place is. Uh, brain terrain is common on Mars. Uh, it's like a maze. So if you got in one of those low areas, you'd be like a rat in a maze. You wouldn't be able to see uh, above uh, those ridges. And those ridges, we believe contain cores of ice. So this is another location where we might be uh, going to uh, harvest ice in the future. I think Elon Musk a little while ago said that uh, we need to go close to where the ice is in the mid latitudes. And these are often found in the mid latitudes. Um, now I'm gonna uh, go and try to show you how to make a high rise suggestion. Uh, it really is exciting to do this. If you, if you like to explore, I like to walk through, through the uh, canyons and, and, and woods and everything. So I'm, I'm an explorer. So this is what I do. I, I go and I find a map. I find a map and find pictures there. And I found uh, something that we could look at. So this is um, a map of all the CTX images we have. And I'm going to uh, zoom in on a location in the southern hemisphere by this impact crater. This is uh, the impact crater called Arjar. And I see my thing here. And this is working pretty well. Okay, so you keep zooming in here. And I'm about where I want to be. So this is the, uh, the picture area I want to explore today. Uh, now, each one of these rectangles represents a CTX image. And they are really good. You'll see in a few minutes how good they are. Uh, and uh, we now have pretty much total coverage of the whole planet with these CTX images. That Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter has this, and it's been up there for over 10 years taking these pictures. So we're, we're pretty good shape now. Now, when I find a, a picture I want, I just have to click on the arrow and click on the location. And then the pictures from that area appear down here. And I want this one K10, that's the one I've been working with. Okay, and we come up with our picture. And what you get, uh, is a wide view uh, of a topographical map of the area, wide view, the, the red here is higher and the green is lower. And this red box represents the picture over here. So uh, what I like to do is enlarge this. You could zoom it up or you could just click down at the bottom and use the, the whole screen. Now, uh, what I was uh, looking at, I'm gonna start the top here. So there's a crater at the top. And uh, I need to find something interesting and something maybe scientifically interesting or whatever. So uh, there's a number of uh, channels here, uh, channels probably caused by water. And you could probably make uh, a suggestion based on these channels. 
And if you look around some more, this is the, uh, the rim of that crater, southern rim. Go around a little bit more and there are some sand dunes. Now, sand dunes would be nice to take. You saw the, some before. Uh, they can be very pretty colors. Uh, but we can look around some more and see if what else is there. Now, you get out a little more and you, you see these, these uh, ridges. And so we have some ridges that are sort of just thrown together. And then nearby, we have some other ridges. They're, they're bigger and they're sort of meeting at right angles. And then we look around and we'll see some more. Here's, there's a lot of them here. So here's some more ridges. So those would probably be good to suggest. We're not exactly sure of the, what causes these. We have some ideas. So now uh, we know what we want to look at. So we want to go back and go to the site to suggest it. I'm going to see it. Okay, here we are. So, uh, so we went to this site to find a picture, and now we'll go to the suggestion page. Okay, this is working, and you, you sign up for this, and this is our page. Okay, I have registered. Okay, I registered and I continue my passwords in there. Okay, and I don't need to check my passwords. And I want to, you can do a variety of things here. I want to create a new suggestion. So I click on this and we get a map. So what we have to do is find our location there on that map. And I'm lucky I found something that, that we could find pretty easily. So we have our, our Hellas impact crater and then over to the left, we have our Arjar impact crater. So we could uh, click on this as we did before and find our location on this. Okay, so we're pretty good here. Now, if we look back at our other map, you see these three craters in a row uh, with the NASA site. And then we have the three craters in a row on uh, this map. And we were working in the lowest crater, the, the more southern crater. And uh, so we could find our location there. And I was keying off of this, this little ridge here so I could uh, make this a little bit higher. Now this gets a little bit complicated here now. Okay, so we have this little ridge here, fat ridge and a fat ridge here. And I wanna make sure I know where I'm doing now. The next time I enlarge this, the whole screen will be filled up with these uh, footprints, image footprints. It'll be hard to see things. Uh, now, what I've done was find this location visually. A lot of times you can't do that. You have to go by the numbers here. Uh, and I hope you could see the numbers here. But as I move this cursor around, you see those numbers in the corner change. So if I go up and down, uh, the number on the right should be changing a lot. That's the latitude. So I can go over to the picture data, image data, find the center latitude is 39.64. And I could find the 39.64, which is someplace in here. So I know the latitude, this latitude is someplace in here for this picture. Uh, now the longitude up and down here is a little more tricky. Uh, the number they give you here is in west longitude, but the number they give you for the image data is in east longitude. So you have to convert this. You have to subtract it from 360, or I found a shortcut. I always like the shortcuts. You go to the CTX image, the number, the ID number, the last two numbers is the uh, longitude and west longitude. So it's about 46, it's rounded off somewhat. So uh, we go here and we find 46 is, is about in this location. That agrees with pretty much what we, what we see here. So okay, now the next one, we'll see the footprints. Now, uh, we probably don't want to suggest something that somebody else has suggested. So we have to be careful here. Okay, and here's our image uh, suggestions. And uh, the yellow are suggestions, and the red are ones that are already taken. And uh, notice that we said that you could probably make a suggestion with those uh, channels. And uh, somebody has made suggestions, and also somebody's made a suggestion which they took the picture of. So th those are probably good ideas, but somebody else got there first. Okay, now uh, we wanted to get the ridges and here's this fat ridge here and the fat ridge here. So we want to go right up above that. Okay, so uh, now notice we have these two little craters here right above this ridge. 
And all we have to do is find those two craters and go above it, but we can't see the craters because the resolution here is not good enough. So I got to make a guess right now. I'll guess right here. And I click twice and that puts the target there. Okay, now we'll come back later on and try to improve that. Okay, you need to put a title on. I got a title already here. Ridge networks in southern mid latitudes. It's nice to say uh, where the thing is and also something about what it is you're looking at. And then you need a science rationale. And I've got one ready here. Okay, it worked. Okay, the objective of this observation is to examine small ridge networks. So we're saying again what we're looking at. And you need some justification for this. And I'm saying looking at such networks from different locations may help us develop better models for their formation. I've uh, researched this already, and I, I know that we don't know exactly what causes these. We have a couple ideas, and we need more observations. So th that's what I'm saying there. I like to also say where I got the, uh, my uh, idea from. So if I say I got it from this CTX image, they know that, well, these images are pretty good. You probably, you probably saw something there. It was a pretty good pick images. Now, uh, I usually just go down. You have to give a priority. I've seen a lot of these, and this is probably about average. I could say a three or four. And uh, then you need to have two science themes. You need to have two science themes. Both of them need to be different, okay? And you have many choices here. And we could say for this one, impact processes. Uh, perhaps uh, you need impacts to, to make cracks, and then maybe mineral-rich fluids went in those cracks and then hardened and then now you have ridges there. That's a possibility, that's what's been suggested. Another one might be landscape evolution because this has taken a while uh, to form. And what we have going on now is these are being eroded out of the, out of the subsurface. So you have, you know, it's a long-term long, long -term effect. Okay, now we go along and we hit continue at the bottom. And okay, now this is uh, kind of important. <laughs> Uh, we need to check all of our, this is our last chance we have to check our, our write-up here. You want to check your, your uh, sentence structure, I guess, and your, your spelling and your numbers and things. Now, what you don't want to have happen is to uh, have a really good suggestion and they take the picture and it's picture of the day, and then you have a misspelling in the title. It kind of takes the credibility away. Okay, now, uh, an important trick here to go down and instead of going straight for the create suggestion, do the change in values. That's a, that's a good tip here because we go back and now we could examine our map and it will be a better map now. So after you do that, the map gets better and we can enlarge and see if we could get a little better with that. And notice we now can see these two little craters. We couldn't see them before. So uh, we have to go right above those two craters to find our ridges here. And so we need to adjust that. So to adjust it, you, you click and drag. Okay, you click and drag this over here, and that makes it a lot better. Okay, so we are all set now. I believe we can go down and submit our suggestion. So we get a continue, and then we go down, and hopefully we do the create suggestion. And there it, it tells us, uh, we have a target suggestion and it gives a number. I usually write the number down someplace, but it is it is in the system. Now we want to go back. Okay, that worked. So that's how we get our uh, suggestions in. Now hopefully, 2,500 or so, we'll have Mars looking like this. We'll have the beach. We'll have the water and the girl. However, maybe people being as they are, maybe a little bit later we'll have this kind of mess. And remember, anyone can make these suggestions. And all I can say is it's a lot of fun for me to do this. I've done a lot of them. And uh, to help you with information, there's a lot on our, uh, our uh, Marspedia. Okay, thank you. And any questions? Well, thank you, Jim. That was uh, a lot of information. Uh, just to uh, clarify, if someone wants to see this resource, uh, is there a website to go to, or how can they get look at this for themselves online? Okay, I'm not sure I understand the question. Now, there's the uh, there's the site you go to. Right, that's what I would. So, All if right. somebody wanted to make a suggestion, you can go there, and they do have some information there. Um, 
Now, okay, they, they recently put out a video. It's, it's a little bit like the video I have here showing you how to do this too. And uh, it's, uh, I have a link for, I don't have a link here. The link for it is under uh, High Wish. So if you do a search for High Wish program, uh, on that article I wrote, I have a link for a, uh, a video that NASA made. And it's a little bit like what I did here. Now, if, if the person wanted uh, uh, more information about what's, what to ask, I guess you just study the literature and a good place is to study the uh, Marspedia. Right. And if someone needs help navigating this resource, who would they reach out to for help? Well, let's see, I had my contact information there. They could send me an email, I guess. Uh, FaceYourDemons at yahoo.com? Yes. All right. All right, so we have a few questions here that I'm going to try to consolidate them because they have to do with the color images. Yes. So that, are those colors true or have they been altered in some way because of just the whole process of taking them and transmitting them and rendering them on this site? Oh, yes and no, there's, there's some truth to that. But like I said, we manipulate those colors to get the, uh, the minerals out, to find out what minerals they are. And it's, it's a little bit complicated. The, the colors that they take the pictures in are not the same as you'd see with your naked eye. Uh, they're, they're different. We use infrared usually instead of red. And then okay. we, the band, the, the amount of color we, we take is, is different than what you see in your eyes. And so it's, it's uh, the, especially with the sand dunes, the sand dunes, uh, they're much, much enhanced. They're like the colors I showed are much enhanced, uh, but they're not enhanced to fool you. <laughs> they're enhanced because the colors we use, they help tell us more about the minerals. Okay. Our, you're going to have to help me because I'm, I'm not quite sure what open source means, but are these images open source? Okay, I'm not sure what we mean by open source either. They're, they're public domain. Effectively, because you, you download them and you manipulate them, so effectively. Yeah, so and I, and I have no copyright on these, these images, and I, um, I put hundreds of images on uh, uh, Marspedia, and there's no copyright on those. The ones, the ones that I, ones that I put together in the high rise, there, all these are public domain. Okay. I'm, what I'm trying to say is, if they use something from Marspedia, they're really safe. Now, oh. if, you, if you get these pictures from somebody, somebody else off the web, they might have a copyright. Okay, and that. <laughs> Bear with me, Marspedia is on the Mars Society website, correct? Uh, it, you can get to it from there. All right. But it's, let's see if I get a, okay, there's, there's the, uh, you can get, you could start with the Mars Atlas, go, go there. And from that, from that link, you could get all over the place. I'm, I have a, uh, a talk tomorrow where I explain how to find out all kinds of information from Marspedia, and it's it's based on going to this particular uh, site. All right. Well, we it is uh, nine o'clock. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Eastern Standard Time, so it is uh, time to stop. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, all for being here. Yes, thank you everyone. Thank you, Jim, for sharing this with us. You've expanded, you certainly have challenged our uh, uh, learning here tonight. So have a good evening, everyone. Have a great rest of the convention. I am now signing us off.